If you have ever been to Haven for Hope, it is a special place. It is a place that offers people an opportunity to change their lives. I've seen it up close. So has our guest today. Kenny Wilson is the CEO and the president, the former, I, I have to get used to saying this, the former CEO and president of Haven for Hope. He served for, with Haven for five years and you're not stepping down, you're stepping aside. Tell me, tell me why you made that decision, Kenny. A lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, it is a stepping aside, and I don't think anybody's mad at me. I'm not mad at anybody. Uh, it, it is. I hit five years, and uh, frankly, um, it's one of the most rewarding things. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. My wife, who I think is listening from another country, would agree. Uh, but it's also it's 24/7. It, it, I sit in this office, and we deal with issues. And I think I I couldn't have made this up. And yet we've got to figure out what to do, but it's a very rewarding uh, task. Uh, and I just felt like it was time because of Haven's condition is excellent. Uh, people have been generous through a pandemic and a storm. Uh, we've been tested in a pandemic and a storm. We have a terrific uh, leadership team, great staff and a great board. And I felt there will never be a better time. And in fact, I told our board chairman that I think Five years is a good run. I've got some other things I want to do, although I don't know what that is. I just want to be available mainly for my family. And I felt like it was time. I imagine in this incredibly important transition, you're looking back, but also looking ahead at the same time. So what would you say are perhaps your your proudest accomplishment at Haven uh, has been, but also the biggest challenge that the shelter faces lying ahead? Well, I. I don't uh, take any pride in anything I've done. I, I, I think uh, it's a team effort here. Um, let's take COVID, for example. Uh, we sat in this, this office uh, every day when COVID began for months and said, with great leaders who really smart people capable and said, what else have we got to do? What, what else do we have to do? And we did it. We completely pivoted this business to, um, create safety for our staff and cer certainly for our residents. In fact, right now we're like in our 80th day of no uh, positive tests. Uh, we uh, are, we're proud of that. Uh, we're grateful for it. How did, how did that happen? I, you know, people ask me that and I say, I don't know, except what I know what we've done. One example is we've been very careful about contact tracing, a term that none of us knew much about before. And we've got a great team that does it, led by our general counsel and house counsel. And what we learned is, you know, people come and go, our staff comes and goes, and we never locked down Haven. We, we said to our residents, you're free to come and go, but please be careful. What we found, the, the few, that, few positive cases we had along the way, uh, they didn't get it here. They got, they admitted, I went to a wedding, I went to a party. My neighbors had a backyard barbecue, all things that we said, please don't go do that. And um, so we felt like we had created a safe place as safe as possible. And it seems like the numbers bear that out. Kenny, there's been so much energy around the homeless issue, especially in recent months with the pandemic. And we're seeing mm -hmm. more people in tents. We're seeing more people camped out than perhaps we've ever seen before what would you say to people that are out there that are wondering what they can do to help? Well, it's a, it's a very complicated issue. And um, I, I will tell you that not a day goes by that some friend or contact says, what's Haven going to do about the homeless? What, what about the encampments? What, and there's even been some bills uh, filed in Austin with the legislature and I've testified once about banning camping it's a controversial issue it's it, there's no good answer for this and so some would say they have a right to to be there i've said they have a right to be homeless uh but i don't know about property owners etc but i know that when they're in the camps we can't help them much uh we think they're dangerous places we know i could go into detail about that uh, but we know when we get them at Haven, they have an opportunity. And, um, you know, I've got examples from last week 
uh, where we got people out of jail, a couple of people through our jail outreach program. They've come here instead of going to the street or to a gang. And now that these two individuals got their GED, it will change their life. They can get jobs now that they couldn't get before. So it, camps are hard. Um, there are all kinds of views on it. We know what we do here. We can't, it, Haven is a great joint venture in collaboration of many parties, as you know, uh, but it happens here. It's not the only way to help those who are homeless. It is a way. I think it's a really good way. I think it works. I've seen it hundreds of times in the five years I've been here. People go to another place, a better place, or their own home. So that's that's sort of a rough uh, feeling. But I will tell you, homelessness, people still ask me, what has surprised you? I said, it's more complicated than I could have expected. Haven for sure. But the whole issue of homelessness, it's socioeconomic, it's political, it's, it, it just goes on and on. It's a very hard issue. Uh, and we just say, here's what we do here. It's not the only way. There are terrific organizations in San Antonio that help those who are homeless. We partner with all of them and we're grateful for each of them. Absolutely a team effort and our thanks to you and your team at Haven uh, for all the work that you've done to make an impact Thank on you. our community as you step aside, not step down as a former president and CEO of Haven for Hope. Yeah, and I, you will still be involved. You're going to do some fundraising and some other different things. Yeah, I'm a part time uh, uh, relationships with our major donors, try to create some new ones um, and do some government relations work. Great. But part time kind of my schedule and support the new CEO who the interim CEO is Molly Beglary, who I've worked with for exactly five years and a phenomenal person, great choice. My recommendation for this interim role and uh, it's gonna be great. Kenny, I just, you know, you and I've got to know each other over the years and uh, of course we'll continue to be friends, but I just wanna tell you job well so. done. Job well done. Thank you, Steve. Thank Absolutely. you, Myra. Thank you both. Thanks for being here.